scientists have discovered a strong correlation between vitamin D deficiency and mortality rates from the coronavirus. A new study led by a research team at Northwestern University reveals patients from countries with high COVID-19 death rates had lower levels of vitamin D compared to patients in countries not as severely affected. Joining us now to discuss, Dr. Eric Mandel, director, medical director at Mandel Vision. Dr. Mandel, thank you for being with us this morning. Now, we know that the summer sun and the warmer weather is right around the corner. Do you think this could help fight the infection? Well, we, I think one of the things is we're all looking for a magic bullet here. Um, we take every study with a grain of salt. However, what we know about vitamin D in general is long-term deficiencies can affect your ability to fight infection. It can infect uh, autoimmune diseases. There was even a study that hasn't been corroborated that it actually helped with the uh, fight the influenza vaccine. Uh, sorry, the influenza of uh, um, getting the flu. Um, so the key really here is is how does this help us understand how this virus works, how it attacks our body, how what it, what we may be deficient in and how we can develop medications, drugs that attack it. And is vitamin D a a secondary or is it a primary function for infection in this particular virus? And although these results could potentially be in the early stages, these findings, this research, would you say that supplements could be a solution here? Should we be adding more vitamin D to our diet, uh, not to our diets, to, to supplement uh, from some sort of vitamin intake? Well, vitamin D, which is technically not a vitamin, but it's the only thing that you, uh, of, of the vitamins that you can naturally make. So that's sunlight. You can supplement. Um, but, you know, we look at some of these countries that are in the southern part of Europe that they should have more UV light and vitamin D, places like Italy. Um, but the only way, I wouldn't tell anybody to take any supplements until they speak to their um, healthcare provider to test them to see if they have low vitamin D. Um, again, we don't want to take more than is necessary, but if you are vitamin D deficient um, for coronavirus or for other problems that you can have long-term problems, you should be you take supplements if you cannot get enough sunlight. Who doesn't get enough sunlight or who are the people who have vitamin D deficiencies? Usually the elderly, some people say people who are more pigmented, um, we people who work night shifts. Um, so those are usually people that have a higher risk factor for it. But it should be something that, especially now with the coronavirus, that you, to talk to your health care provider to be checked for. Yeah, maybe make a virtual uh, meeting, set up that consultation through the, through the phone or through the screen as well. Uh, doctor, we have heard that there could be a second wave this fall of coronavirus. How should we prepare for that to stay as healthy as possible? So we're in a balancing act here. We're trying to get the infection rate so low that when we go back out into the real world, it's almost inevitable that there's going to be an increase or a spike in cases that it doesn't go over an infection rate of one which means we get back into an epidemic mode. Um, so the, I think one of the things here is we have to have our, a leadership that is going to manage expectations of what's going to happen. Uh, if we keep, remember, 19 out of 20 people who die or get severe illness from uh, coronavirus are people who are elderly, who have comorbidities, people who are immunosuppressed, have other uh, medical systemic conditions. If we keep them in a shelter in place until they either get immunity or get a vaccine, um, then the rest of us should do okay. Problem is the media is gonna catch the one person, the, the anecdotes who are young, healthy people who are gonna get sick and some may die and extrapolate that for everybody else and tell everybody to run back in. But people, once we go out, they'll social distance, they'll do proper things, but they're not gonna go back into a major shelter in place. We're going to have a hard time with contact tracing when we find somebody who has it, who has the virus, and then we track 50 or 100 people. How many of those are going to go back indoors here? So we're really going between two, you know, to a rock and a hard place here to try to get it down. But until there's a vaccine, we're going to have um, the COVID virus around, and there could be waves, and we can manage them as long as it doesn't overwhelm the healthcare system. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining us on the program this morning, Dr. Eric Mandel, Medical Director at Mandel Vision. Thanks so much.